happy harvesters. This is Erin from the At Homestead and I want to talk to you today about protecting your plants from scabies. Scabies. So um, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about and show you at least what I'm doing um, is how to protect my plants from the cicadas. So Brood X is coming out literally any day now. As soon as the soil temperature is around 65 degrees, they'll start exiting the ground and burrowing upwards. Sometimes you can see mounds of the dirt that they push up. And again, the cicadas will be going after your woody shrubs and your trees. They're not gonna be going after your garden. They're annoying. Um, they won't harm your veggies or your flowers. And then the emergence holes are also annoying because I feel very strongly from growing up in Virginia where we got ground bees a lot, that it um, it's not aeration for the yard, it's actually just a potential hole for a yellow jacket. So I like to cover them up and fill them in. So um, I, I encourage you to do the same. You don't have to, but there'll be enough holes that it's gonna be hard to keep up with it anyway. Um, so again, the cicadas, when they do emerge, they will swarm the woodier or shrubbier plants and they will attach, mate, lay their eggs on those trees, bushes, or shrubs. And the larva will then detach, fall to the soil or to the ground, burrow into the soil and eat the roots of those plants. When you have young plants, like I do have quite a few young plants still on my property, younger than three years old, they're more susceptible to these cicadas and there's gonna be a lot of them. Um, for those of you not experiencing brood 10 this year, excited for you. Um, but I wanted to make sure that because I've experienced this before um, and throughout my whole life living here on the East Coast, um, except for a little stint in the Midwest, but, um, you know, there's some things that we can do. So I highly recommend covering up those plants. And that's actually what I wanna talk about next. See, there's a couple different things that you can do to protect yourself. Number one, you can delay the planting. Delay planting anything that the cicadas find attractive or that they like. Um, put up physical barriers like I'm going to do. But you can use any type of fine mesh tool, something of course that allows breathing. Um, for the plant, sorry, my azalea. <laughs> my azalea has overtaken my pathway and I'm okay with it. Um, so I have this here that I'm going to be covering my, ras my newly planted raspberry patch. And here it is. I've got Carolinas here. These are the two canes, three canes actually, sorry. And then I have three canes of the red heritage raspberries here as well. And this whole span is about 10 feet because I planted them a couple a couple feet apart, obviously. So I needed to make sure I could have something cover this entire span. Okay, so what I've got, it's a little windy, so sorry about the sound, but what I have is some hoops that I'm gonna put over top of my raspberry plants, my canes. And then I have this um, insect netting that I purchased online because uh, we're not going anywhere still. And I have some cayenne pepper. And so I'm gonna sprinkle some of the ground cayenne pepper around the plants. That helps to keep some pests away. And if any bugs burrow up from the ground, any cicadas burrow up from the ground, this will help to keep them away from the plants directly as well. And then they will just die. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this and how it looks at the end. I just wanted to show you. So I planted these canes about a week ago and there's already new growth on this one. And this one, uh, I don't see any. I'm gonna have to give them a good watering, although we did just get rain. Um, but these other ones are starting to, to show some form of life. This is starting to bud up softly. This one here, these are the Carolinas. And then that one over there. So I set up all the hoops and now I'm gonna put the mesh over top. If you're going 
going to use a barrier like I'm using, avoid using bird netting. Bird netting, the openings are just too big. The cicadas will be able to get through those holes. You can't use deer netting either. It's just too big. You should be using a mesh, fine mesh, like insect netting or a plant bag. Um, I have two plant bags for my trees. They're gonna be super tall, but my trees are now super tall compared to when I used that last. So we'll see. Make sure that you tie the bottom of the bag tightly against the bottom of the trunk. Because if the cicada cannot attach to the tree, it's not gonna lay the larva, the eggs, excuse me, and then you won't have larva dropping to the soil. When they start to sing and they emerge and they um, shed their exoskeleton and become the red bug-eyed creatures that we love, they will begin to sing and that's kind of like their mating song. And once they start to sing, it's gonna be like six to eight weeks until they stop. This is a long haul. It's not overnight. It's not a hot second. Um, it's, it's something that, that you constantly have to be, not battling, but be aware of. Because it's so long, don't forget to take the netting off of your plants to increase the air circulation. Otherwise you're just gonna get diseases and, and rot. So you don't wanna do that. But so, I that's essentially what it'll look like. I'm gonna surround it with bricks just to help keep it down, um, the netting and everything. But I think that, um, I think this will be the best we can do and we'll see what happens with the cicadas. I hope this was helpful. I hope that you guys are preparing in any way you can if you need to. And if you ever have any questions, just leave them um, down below and I'll try to answer them. But uh, come on, Brood 10. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.